we are here with Astoria Fishing. Just about to embark on our new fishing adventure. I'm Randy. I'm from Santa Rosa, California. Nice to meet you, Randy. How did you learn about Astoria Fishing? Uh, my wife and I were coming to Astoria to, to go travel in Oregon uh, in our fifth wheel. And we decided to come to Astoria. And I said, well, we're there. I might as well go fishing. And I just looked Jeff up. Uh, online. I just read his bio in there and it sounded good. Hi Jeff. Good morning. I'm one of the local locals here, real actual local, not pretend local. But we fish here all the time, here only, and uh, I think that gives us a little home court advantage sometimes. And we're about to go out and find out, so hopefully it works out well. I like our odds quite a bit. I'm Julie, I'm the deckhand. Hi, I'm Lisa. How did you find Jeff? I came fishing with him two years ago. I did some crabbing. So, they're awesome people. Wanted to come back and catch a big salmon. My favorite analogy is like a 73 El Dorado Cadillac. <laughs> it's not new, it's not super shiny. It's got a lot more fish than those super shiny new boats, I think since it's 20 years old, but they don't make them like this. No. There's nothing else like these. Um, you'll see when we're running through windways, they're, they're super uh, heavy. It's like, it rides almost like a fiberglass boat. It's required by federal law for guys like me. You're all wearing type 5 life jackets in the unlikely event of a water landing that automatically will boost and provide 35 pounds of buoyancy to go more than twice what a normal speed vest does. If you were to fall in the water and it didn't go poop, there's a yellow handle on the bottom right hand side. Pull down sharply on that, it will manually inflate. We have fire extinguisher right there and right back here. First aid kits under that seat, push flares under that seat right there. Coast Guard video right here. If you're on channel 16, you push the gray, push the talk button. If you're talking to the very best rescue crew in the entire world, hours will Coast Guard. But also has an e curve on the back, it stands for electronic variable information relay beacon. And that mouthful basically means if this boat were to sink, they automatically know who we are, where we are, and that we need help. It happens in minutes without anybody on the boat doing anything. And last but not least, the rescue ring on the back of the boat with the rescue rope attached. And if I fall in, it helps when he throws it to me. Bring us up for safety. We've got about a, ah, I don't know where we're going, I'm going to use the force when I get out there. Um, no, I don't know. We're going to two places. Uh, either above the bridge on the Washington side or right below the bridge on the Washington side. I think it's about 15 minutes to get there. When we come out of this marina, we're going to go much faster, so we'll launch your hats. We get to lighten up for them to see the paint, so don't get us over there. today it's a lot like dating you don't want to be too excited you don't want to care way too much you want to be smooth and calm and easy going no sudden moves fishing is trying to teach us all a lesson and the lesson is relax and enjoy your life your fate is not actually yours to decide you can screw it up by trying to make it something it's not but there's nothing better than just leaving it what it is let it come to you. What time is it, Brian? 6.45. When are you going to catch a fish? I'm not worried about it. <laughs> Brian, you want to bet $20 I catch one before you? Sure. Sure. I'll take that bet. <laughs> Does that mean bring it in? You're like not, you're not off to a good start. <laughs> Ooh, this crowd is mean. Love it.
How did that feel, your first fish? Uh, good. Good? It wasn't very big, so you couldn't feel much. <laughs> what do you look for when you're trying to find us fish? Uh, water temperature, current speed. Um, current speed is probably the biggest thing in the river. So, um, let's put this without giving too much away. So, <laughs> in a medium sized tide, uh, you know, you want to be in water that's not going too fast. I fish different. I'm old school. We're using bait, herring, and anchovies. Uh, until I start cleaning fish that have spin fish and uh, spinners and uh, super baits in their stomachs, never seen that before. I've seen lots of herring and anchovies in their stomachs. I'm old school bait, at least until the incoming tide, and then sometimes we switch to pro trolls. But um, I hope to not make it to that point in the day because we've caught enough fish. Those guys wait for the incoming tide, but you don't. Well, yeah, so you just, knowing knowing the river and the, and the current and how the river, where you can find slow water uh, in a big outgoing tide, it's not as hard on medium and definitely not as hard on small outgoing tides, but there are spots where you can get into soft water where those fish are going to congregate um, most of the time, some of the time. So I, I think they bite better on the outgoing tide. You just got to be in water that they um, that they don't have to chase something down super aggressively. Um, so if you're going, you know, six or seven miles an hour, then you're probably going to have problems. You got you to find soft water seams, and that's one of the places where I think the home court advantage is a pretty major advantage. Is understanding where the fish are going to be probably and where they're going to be um, in water that they don't have to work super hard to get something. Oh my gosh, double fish on. <laughs> double net. Oh my goodness. This is so fun. Oh, oh one in the net. But guess what? A ride, after she missed one. A ride home will be a more than twenty dollars, so we're gonna bug her. <laughs> right out is free, it's a ride back that cost you. This is so exciting. Not only are you can try to catch the fish, you have to bite the seal. Like five minutes. It was a challenge, but it's hooked in the tail. Oh, was it bit? Where was it bit? Yeah, it was bleeding. Not like I caught a whale. It was bit in the face. So the meat's fine. Oh, you got lucky. You got lucky. Congratulations. There you go. Hold that guy. Yeah, sure can. 
Congratulations! Yay. Look at these two. Look at these two. They both have a Chinook. Do you want me to gloat that I caught the fish before you did? I'm not that type. I wasn't going to say anything about it, but you owe me 20 bucks. I do owe you $20. Good day. This is the third fish we've had on. And what time is it anyway? It's like Still 9 early. and 7. What time Good is it fishing now? Good trip for sure. 718. 718. Like, there's no incoming tide yet. Good day. What was the rush like? It was a good rush. I haven't caught a fish like that in a while. This is a big it was one. A good one. Yeah. Was it a good fight? It was a good fight. My back hurts. <laughs> Next time you try to put the sea along there, that's yeah. really going to make yeah, exactly. a good challenge. <laughs> Seals and sea lions think you have a fish on and they'll come closer to your boat when you're standing up. They are that smart. side of the boat looking forward the left cheek gets cut and the right side of the boat if you're sitting on the right side you get the right cheek of the fish cut the front seats get the top of the tail cut the middle seats get nothing on the tail cut and the back seats get the bottom of the tail so she's the left front seat left side and then this is right side back seat so what is buoy 10 buoy 10 has three different meanings buoy 10 the buoy is the bottom of the river legally speaking go below buoy 10, you're in the Columbia River control zone until you get out to buoy 4, then you're legally in the ocean. Much more common use of the phrase buoy 10 is buoy 10 the area, which is from buoy 10 to buoy. That hill sticking out back to you in the bridge over there. About a 15 mile stretch of the river, that's the buoy 10 area. By far, the most common meaning of the phrase buoy 10 is buoy 10 the season, which is August 1st through Labor Day. And normally, when somebody says buoy 10, that's what they're talking about. Left hand out front of the reel, okay. Okay, good. Okay, good. Pull, pull, pull. Just pulled out the line. No! Oh. My baby! Be a good fish. My baby's gone. Oh, that was such a good fight. We got two wilds on the boat. Hey, Jeff, it makes it a little hard on us when you catch more than one fish at a time <laughs> when all the rods go down. You can kind of stagger them a little bit. Have you realized it's two on each time? Yeah. Two on each time. Are you happy with the results today? Sure. Not too bad so far. I don't know why we haven't had a bite in 15 minutes though. So. Literally five bites in the last hour. <laughs> yeah, we, we started off pretty strong. You're not surprised though. You said this would happen. strength of what I do works really good on the outside tide. That's a well presented bait. Going slow.
I think he already took it. If I'm going somewhere to go fishing, I'm going to hire a charter boat. There's two things I'm looking for. One is an owner-operated boat, not a hired captain, not a booking service. I want to talk to the guy that owns run Make sure you're getting him running the boat, not somebody else. And a local, not a not a seasonally local person, but somebody who actually fishes someplace. Oh, right front, right front. Another fish on you? Let it eat, let it eat, let it eat. Go get it. This is, this is her. All right, Michelle, bring her in. Boy, she's pulling. Boy, oh you got a good one. <laughs> oh, I got a sea lion's got it. Yeah, it's a Keep going. He's yeah. running with us. Oh, jeez. Yeah, no, there's not going to be anything left. Some fish flying all over the place. You and me left. It's our turn. The only ones. Or the one and only. Yeah, we just don't have, we've caught fish, just no keepers. What do you think? That's a view. Look so at that. Heavy. Beautiful. Good color. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's going to be some good eating. Oh, my gosh. You need to fish with Jeff. Like, <laughs> you can just see the results for yourself. Coho and you lost. Well, I, I lost two. And now there's a fish on. Three wild. Wow. You need one. I'll go on back. The most powerful bite stimulant in the entire world is what I call the pants around the ankles bite. <laughs> if for any reason your pants are around your ankles, you can't stand up without falling over. Your odds are way higher at that moment. Way higher. Don't back up. Just take a run. Is it another wild? Yeah. <laughs> are you kidding me? Four wilds. Four wilds. Born to be wild. Catch my pants falling down from the back. <laughs> the yeah, captain did say when you got said. pants around the ankles. That's the literal one. <laughs> That's what we were joking about. That once your pants is around your ankles, you're gonna catch a fish. Aww. It's one thing you gotta catch fish, but to be out here and have comfortable seats, a really nice stable boat, makes a difference. You see a lot of people out here. It's not as comfortable fishing. As this is this is good fishing. Good day. And you got a nicely packed lunch. And a nicely packed lunch. <laughs> Score. Jeff didn't do the shirt 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 for it. That was that was somebody else I know. Another wild. Five wilds. 
spot. Hardly anybody fishes over here. Well, we're getting fish. Oh my god, that's huge! Huge! several years in the Hui Ten fishery has demonstrated that we are quite a bit better than average most days. Not the only one catching wild. Yeah. How does that feel? Feels good. It could have been like your seventh wild. Yeah. And you're like, no, let him pick it. Let someone else have some fun. I cannot believe how much fish we're catching. Can you believe that? than we caught in the entire boat on three of my trips. Three charter trips combined. You caught more fish than all three of my charter fishing trips. Must be the captain. Uh, it is the, the only reason because I have never seen anybody catch this much fish. So from oh, is this your best charter then? Uh, yeah, hands down.
talk about patience. How many wild Chinooks have you caught? Seven. 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 And I lost count. Your fishies. Your fishies. By golly, we're gonna get one keeper. That looks like a Chinook. Five dollars is a native. <laughs> Yes. Hurry! Hurry! It's a sea lion! It's fast! Hurry! Hurry! Hurry, it's coming! Hurry! Did you get it? The sea lion got it? Yeah, he's running under the boat. Never seen fishing like this before. Like, this is not even like great fishing. This is like a miracle fishing session. <laughs> like nobody fishes like this. And I've been here like maybe eight years. Like never seen something like this. Just need to go and adjust boat. He knows where to be. He knows where to be. It's like a fish whisperer over here. What do you think of the day, Jeff? Never burned through a 60 herring before ever. <laughs> That's cool, I guess. I was thinking we would live it out way before we burned through 60 areas, but it was not that day. Lots of natives today. Lots of natives. Incredible. Beautiful parking job. Here's the beautiful boat. Storiafishing.com. Seen it on the water many times. Nice to see the boat in person. The hospitality here. Bar none. You know, I think most days um, we do better than average. So like to think that we do really well compared to average. Most days we do. Every once in a while you zig when you should have zagged all day long and it doesn't turn out well. I think today but, was exceptionally well. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of action. A lot. 40 uh, plus bites, exceptionally well. Yeah, I, yeah, well over 40 I think. Yeah. So, anyway. Thank you so much for this trip. Oh, thank you. Really appreciate your hospitality. Alright, thank you very much. Probably my last day fishing buoy ten this season, so I'm leaving quite happy. Very thankful to Jeff and Julie for making this happen for me. I really think we have a more thorough, uh, complete uh, guide um, experience for our customers because of um, the combination of my experience and skills and um, the woman's touch that Julie brings, you know, gloves and rain gear and just um, all the little things that she does to make the experience uh, more personal for people, more, um, more in tune with what people are hoping for, I think, I hope. And uh, when we get up to the house, you'll see that too. It, you know, um, we have everything you need to carry fish on an airplane. If you are hopping on an airplane tomorrow, um, you know, just really a broad scope of considerations for our customers compared to what most guides do. So Jeff, why did you become a guide? It's what I always wanted to do since I was a little kid. Um, I grew up on a dairy and we had um, irrigation pond and a creek running through the back with about 40 acres and uh, it was, it was, when I was a kid we, we called them speckled trout but I came to learn later that they were coastal cutthroat trout in this creek and when I was seven probably I was uh, uh, pretending that I was a fishing guide 
and had imaginary customers and I was in Alaska with a lodge and my life dream was to have an Alaska lodge like a fly fishing lodge and um, my wife would run a bed and breakfast and so you know my as it turned out it wasn't exactly like I imagined when I was seven but pretty close I don't know that many people that uh, are what they wanted to be when they were seven years old so I feel very blessed to um, have had that um, opportunity you know the opportunities are come into my life and um, influence from my mother was a very large part of it because she's the kind of person who would go backpacking by herself if no one else would go with her and has been to several third world countries as a missionary um, a go for it type of person you know um, my dad is the most honorable man I've ever known but more of a worker bee you know I, you know I, I think without the influence of my mom, I, I probably wouldn't be a, a fishing guide just because she showed me how to uh, go for it in life. And so when I got into a position where I realized that I could try to start a fishing guide business, I uh, went for it, you know, and it's turned out really well. Here we are 14 years later and I'm one of the busiest guides in the region. And um, I, I love it. You're one of the kindest too. Oh, thank you. We're more caring, more thorough, more considerate um, than other guide services in general, if, if not all of them, almost all of them. So um, that's something I'm really proud of.